Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 13th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. I knew it would be a good day at the Hawk Watch with the southerly winds, so I got up early and got out around 7 a.m. and started by scanning the lake. And there was an okay number of waterfowl, not as much variety or numbers in terms of the ducks this morning, but still a decent amount to scan through. The first raptor of the day was this American kestrel that migrated past over the lake around 7.30. And I couldn't resist snapping a photo of this snazzy-looking male long-tailed duck. And this northern harrier also migrated below eye level out over the lake. The winds today were light to moderate from the southeast, so the count was conducted from the north lookout. And it was actually quite chilly in the morning with temperatures starting around freezing, but by the afternoon it was comfortable and even a bit warm. And the sky today was really good for spotting. It was... Mostly sunny with a high, thin layer of clouds, so got the sun to get the thermals, but also a layer of clouds to help with spotting. And look who was at Derby Hill for the first time ever. It's the one and only Kim, who will be here for the next few days. We had a good flight of killdeer today, with 27 migrating past the North Lookout. We had a smaller number of migrating snow geese, with just under 200 for the day. I think the bird of the day had to be red-shouldered hawk, and we had 71 of them, and most of them were adults, just like this bird. Beautiful plumage and really good looks with that light. I often don't think about the variation in plumage in adult red-shouldered hawks, but really if you look at them closely, you'll notice that some of them are much more heavily marked, such as this bird. We had a really good flight today of red-shouldered hawks and red-tailed hawks, but the only rough-legged hawk of the day was this light morph. And speaking of red-tailed hawks, here we have a nice adult, which was one of 67 that migrated by today. Here's a female red-bellied woodpecker, and I thought it looked funny up on top of a telephone pole. We had the biggest flight of turkey vultures so far, with just over 200 for the day. Here's a nice look at a male American kestrel. Notice the blue and black top side to the wings and also that orangish red tail. Here's a bird that Kim spotted migrating way overhead and even looking where she was pointing, I could barely find it. And this is the first great blue heron of the season. Here's an adult Cooper's hawk that tried to sneak by and I only caught it when it was behind the trees. Here's another adult red-shouldered hawk just because they're such a pretty bird. Here's another bird that has long trailing legs and a long neck, though this one holds the neck out straight, and the overall plumage is more gray and brown. This is a sandhill crane. Here we have an eagle, and we see a really large head and a lot of splotchy white to the underside. This is an immature bald eagle. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross. We see a large head sticking out. We see a long tail, and we can see the outer tail feathers tuck underneath and are shorter than the central ones, making this a Cooper's hawk. And we see the orange barring, which indicates adult. And this is an example of when you can't use the tip of the tail to distinguish Cooper's hawk from sharp shinned hawk, because you might look and say that this tail looks squared off at the tip, but really when the tail is completely folded like this, you're only seeing one or two feathers make the shape of that tip. So when you're using that field mark of square versus rounded, you usually want the tail to be fanned out a little bit so you can tell if those outer tail feathers are shorter or not. Here's another adult red-shouldered hawk with a lot of damage to the feathers of the left wing. And I wonder how that happened, but it was able to fly pretty well still. Here we have an eagle and we see a small head. We see a white base to the tail and we see small white patches in the wings. This is an immature golden eagle. Here we have a buteo with a belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk in the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail indicate adult. Here we have another hawk shaped like a flying cross, but this one looks much more compact overall. The wings look a little shorter. The tail looks shorter, has a very small head. The tip of the tail is very straight across. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have an eagle with a small head with some gold color to the back of the neck. We see a long tail and we see a two-toned patterning to the underside of the wings. This is a golden eagle. Here we have an eagle with a large head and a lot of white to the underside, especially here in the wing pit areas. This is an immature bald eagle. Here again, we have an eagle with a large head and a lot of splotchy white underneath, making this another immature bald eagle. 
This is a bird going through its second winter and you can see that these longer, browner, and more pointed feathers on the wings are the retained juvenile feathers, whereas the other feathers of the wing have already been replaced. Based on the silhouette, can you tell which kind of eagle this bird is? Well, look at the size of the head. Very small head on this bird, very small compared especially to the length of the tail. So this is a golden eagle. Here are two golden eagles that were migrating together, so possibly a mated pair. We had four tree swallows today, and tree swallows are blue on top and white below. Here's the northern harrier that migrated through low and gave us a really nice look in the afternoon, and we see a lot of streaking to the upper breast, so this is an adult female northern harrier. And after the hawk watch ended, we went over to scan the lake one more time, and it was pretty funny. There's all these ice chunks floating around, and all of the Canada geese and green-winged teal were standing on the ice. Taking a look at the eBird list, today we had 63 species. The only new species for the season was Great Blue Heron, bringing us to 83 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for today's migrant raptor totals, Today we had 207 turkey vultures, 23 bald eagles, 10 northern harriers, 5 sharp-shinned hawks, 23 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 71 red-shouldered hawks, 67 red-tailed hawks, and 1 rough-legged hawk. We had 9 golden eagles, and for falcons we had 4 American kestrels, for a total of 420 migrating raptors. That brings us to a season total of 918 migrating raptors. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking like intervals of clouds and sun with a high around 57 and winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So southeast is our best wind direction for keeping the birds low and close to the north lookout. And that wind speed 10 to 15 miles per hour is really good. If you look at the hourly, it's calling the wind maybe a little bit less than that. So my only concern might be that if the wind gets too light, with those warm temperatures, it's possible that a lake breeze might kick in in the afternoon, which would send us over to the south lookout. So well, we'll hope that doesn't happen and that we maintain a strong enough wind to keep us there at the north lookout. Because if we keep that wind, it could be another really good day. And also with uh, sunnier skies, maybe if the birds get up high in the afternoon, they'll be a little difficult to spot. But that's just nitpicking overall. It's looking like it will be another really good day. For Saturday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the low 60s and winds south-southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So again, a good wind direction and speed. I would expect another big day for Saturday. And for Sunday, we continue to have a good southerly wind, but it's looking pretty rainy. So we'll have to see how exactly that plays out. If it's only scattered showers, we could definitely have some raptor movement in between. All right, another great day of hawk watching here at Derby Hill. Actually, it was a little slow to get started this morning with the cold temperatures, but by the time we got to the late morning, the raptors were really starting to move and it turned into a really great afternoon of hawk watching, especially having Kim here at Derby Hill and looking forward to the next few days being just as good, if not better. So hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill or follow along virtually here on YouTube. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.